Welcome back to ISC 2024 in sunny Barcelona at the biggest AV show that you will find in the world. And I'm really pleased to be joined after eight years back with Alex Capazalacho of Josh AI, who we've just stolen away from your seminar, talking about what everybody's talking about right now, the show, which of course is AI technology. So let's roll right back to what AI actually means and explaining to people there is there is that fear. There's definitely still that fear of it taking over my job or I don't understand it. What is AI? And I think it's important for everyone to realize that you're probably using it already. Yeah, so AI is really a foundational technology. Think of it almost like saying software. It doesn't tell you anything at all. It's really a blanket technology. But AI is simply the ability to use a computer to solve a human-like task. Now, under AI, you have machine learning, and machine learning is where you start to solve specific problems, and under machine learning, you have deep learning. Now, deep learning is what gives rise to the ability to do generative AI, things like ChatGPT. That's really what we're talking about when we talk about AI today. Now, ChatGPT is the fastest growing technology we've ever seen. It broke 100 million users in just two months. And so this is really a, a new subset of AI and the ability to create new writing, new photos, new ideas. That's really why it's so exciting. But again, I, I don't see it as taking our jobs away. I see it as helping us do our jobs even better. I guess there are a lot of people who, who don't think that it's not for me. I'm not ready for it yet. But, but in reality, we're probably all using it already in one tool or another. So where are we all using it where we don't realize? I read a great quote earlier, which said, you're not going to be replaced by AI but the person doing your job with AI is going to replace that person not using AI. You're not necessarily using AI without knowing it. I think you're going to be aware if you're using it, but if you're not aware that you're using it, start. And start simple. Start with just writing emails, writing blog posts, doing social media. But when you start to use it and understand it, you get a leg up over your competition. Now, I was talking to you earlier on, Alec. There are a lot of questions about AI. Are people just tagging that phrase on to their product and their service because they feel that they need to. We know it's a genuine tool. We know that there is a big takeover and we are managing data in completely different ways now. What I believe you've been talking about is how we can actually benefit from AI technology. What the tools are that are out there that are gonna assist with system design, with creating better systems, more efficient systems. Where do we start? Yeah, well, that's absolutely right. There are a lot of people throwing around the term AI. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of smoke and you know stuff to not pay attention to. But there's also a lot of real substance. So when we started my company in 2015, we put AI right in the name. You know, we knew that AI was important to what we were doing. But in the last couple of years, it's shifted from regular AI to generative AI. Generative AI is really the ability to create new content, new copy, get help with writing blog posts, or build it right into the product, like what we do around voice control and home automation. And so there's a lot of really exciting stuff with AI if you look past you know, some of the, the little hazards and the things that are trying to get you. So let's just worry about those hazards for one thing, because a lot of people, I, I've been in a lot of seminars recently, um, talking Jack GPT, talking about content generation. Well, this is gonna take over my industry and there'll be no job left for me. And I think that there are a lot of people thinking that, okay, so there's gonna be nothing left for me. Is it taken over from our roles? Is it taken over from what we do? Or is it a genuine useful tool? Yeah, that, that couldn't be further from the truth in terms of taking away. Think of AI and ChatGPT like the internet, like a computer. It's a tool that lets you do your job better, faster, more efficient, but you still need to be there. You still need to be the one orchestrating it, deciding what you wanna do with it. And it's really an opportunity to be better than your competition. I was comparing it the other day to somebody. I'm terrible at maths. I use a calculator. Yep. There is nothing wrong with that calculator. It isn't cheating. It's just doing it, using it as a tool and it's working for me. And, and I see that kind of opportunity there with AI on a much grander scale in effect. Yeah, I mean, when you think about running your business, you spend a lot of time doing things that aren't really helping the bottom line, whether it's recruiting, sending out letters, writing blog posts, you know, internal accounting and things, using AI to make those processes simpler and quicker so you focus on actually driving your business. That's the way I think about AI. It's, it's really all about how do you do more of what you need to do that you're good at and get rid of the stuff that you don't want to do or you're not good at doing. 
So let's apply that now to the technology industry. Let's talk about audiovisual and security technology. Let's talk smart homes. Let's talk about all of those. How that AI, we can now build it into, whether we're building it into the systems or whether we're using it as a tool to design systems, become more efficient. What are the tools that are out there and what do you think the future for it is? Yeah, so I think there are different tools and different capabilities on the manufacturer side compared to the integrator side. On the manufacturer side, very few companies are really using AI to their fullest capability right now, but you can use it for automating workflows, handling tech support, working on your HR processes, stuff like that. On the integrator side though, it's a lot more right now about marketing, communication, the way that you're actually driving leads in business. Honestly, things like ChatGPT and Claude from Anthropic, some of the best tools out there, but really just look for what you need. Do you need to make a presentation? There are AI tools that'll help with that. Do you need to help out with you know, pricing and scoping of a project? There are tools that will help out with that as well. So you wanna find the right AI tool for what you're trying to solve. Don't just think all AI is the same. You wanna you know, do a little bit of homework, find the thing that's gonna help you do what you wanna do. Where are we gonna go next with, with tools? Let's say, for instance, for system design. We are you know, aware just from the work that we're doing that a lot of homes use kind of the same ideas. You have a set of scenes and routines and areas and macros and the ability to make that just auto configurable or a system where you just tell it with plain text, this is what I wanna have happen in the morning and it just happens. That's right around the corner. I think everybody who does get involved in AI, I know you say 12, 15 years you've been involved with it, They've got, they've got some little wow stories of, oh, I've never seen that before in AI. Have, have you got some examples? Yeah, I mean, again, AI, sort of like software, can be used in so many different ways. What blows my mind is we just keep seeing people finding new creative ways. So my company, for example, Josh AI, we have our own AI, we call it Josh GBT, where you can just ask your home, turn on the lights, play some music, and help me make a recipe to cook anything you can imagine. It's using, you know, that vast power of AI to do pretty amazing things. And we're finding people are using it for help with their kids and their learning. They're using it for help on health related questions. Just, it's so amazing. I, I saw someone recently using it for discovering more about the art in their home. You know, learning more about who the artist is and where they came from and what their background was. So I think the sky's really the limit and allows you to get a much more personal experience in the home. You might say, I want to make a 30 second commercial that does X. Well, instead of having to hire a camera crew, a voice actor, a set, all these different things, AI can take pieces of that for you, but you're still in charge of crafting that story. And so I don't think the human's being removed entirely, but you can do it on a smaller budget with a smaller team and you can get that work knocked out much quicker. And I think that's gonna be the same with AV system design and, and how we create new systems and how those buildings become more efficient. A lot of that calculation, a lot of those new ideas are, are are going to be delivered to you handed on a plate in a matter of seconds. Um, so yes, we can become more efficient, but it still needs somebody who understands what the user experience needs to be, what a human user experience needs to be, what the building needs, um, and what that inclined needs as well, I guess. And, and just like an end user can go and install a TV and add an Apple TV and set everything up, they don't have the time, they don't have the know-how, they want to hire a professional. Same thing with AI. A homeowner could theoretically do a lot of this on their own if they learn, but more likely they want to hire a professional installer and have that person with their skill set and their expertise really craft the home to the, the client's liking. And you were talking earlier on as well, we've talked a lot about using it as an everyday tool, using it for content creation, using it for system design. But for the manufacturer, it's a different thing again. Does it need to be adopted into every piece of technology as we move forward? I think companies who don't adopt AI into what they're doing will become obsolete because it allows you to make your product simpler to use, easier to install, quicker to get support and help. If you're not using these technologies, you're making your product unnecessarily complicated. And when we see a product that now uses AI, and now has AI embedded, how do we ask what that actually means? Does it mean anything at all? Is it just a badge? If someone just says it uses AI, throw that out. It doesn't tell you anything. But if they say it sets up much quicker because of using AI and they give examples, the setup is what you're using. It's all about what problem is it solving. AI by itself isn't a problem or a solution, but rather they're problems that AI might help you solve. And so I would really focus on 
how does this make the product better, quicker, more enjoyable, you know, cheaper? And if those are the right things, then that's the right product for you. Now, final question for you, and I'm going to ask you to look into the future, but perhaps we should just ask ChatGPT for the answer ourselves, Alex. But, but where do we see this going? How far ahead can you see AI being used and taking things to the next level? You know, it's a great question. Obviously, we can't predict the future, but it feels like right now we're probably going to overhype the AI capabilities for the next probably 18 to 36 months. We tend to get exuberant and excited about what it could do. And then we get a little disappointed when things don't happen as quickly. But if we move past the next maybe 24 to 36 months and think about what do the next three to five years look like, we're going to see some pretty amazing trends. We're going to see systems getting quicker, easier. AI is going to get adopted into every piece of software. But I think it will take a couple of years for us to really see that happen. We've got loads more coming your way on AI. From How to AV, Alex, thanks for joining us today. Of course, thanks for having me.